Let's uh, start our section. This is uh, one invited talk. Uh, for me, it's a great pleasure to introduce our next invited speaker, Professor Rita Cucchiara from University, University of Modena. Um, I have the opportunity to meet her in, uh, in 2007 uh, when she was the general chair of uh, traditional conference in Italy, the International Conference on Image Analysis and Processing, right? And uh, Ahita is a full professor in computer engineering uh, in University of Modena. Her current interests include pattern recognition and computer vision for video surveillance, magical imaging, and multimedia. Uh, she's involved in research on video annotation, uh, magical image. She has uh, developed some color analysis for skin lesions and melanoma classification. In video surveillance, uh, she's developed on new models of object segmentation, shadow detection, tracking, people beha behavioral analysis, for indoor and outdoor uh, applications. She also is responsible for of many Italian and uh, international projects. Uh, she's author of more than 200 papers in international journals, conferences, proceedings, and so on. She's participating in scientific committees of international conference like uh, CVPR, ICPR, and organized important conference and special tracks, right, in image processing multimedia. Uh, in 2007, she was the general chair of uh, ICAPI for the Italians. <laughs> and now in 2012, she's a chair of a track on pattern recognition applications of ICPR in Tokyo. Okay. So uh, I'm very glad to have you here. I know that you are enjoying Brazil. <laughs> okay. So this is a few. Um, please, uh, Luciano, stop me when uh, uh, it becomes too late for because uh, I'm sure that I'm not so synthetic in my presentation. So, uh, first of all, thanks uh, for everyone and thanks uh, for Luciano and for the other one to invite me here in Brazil because it's true, I enjoy a lot to, to see this. Uh, it's the first time for me to come in here and I'm sure that it's not the last one because I would like to come back uh, as soon as possible. So uh, before starting with my presentation, maybe I can present you where I am and what we are doing, uh, but I thanks for the presentation. Uh, I, uh, I'm working at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia uh, because we have two campuses. Uh, there are two cities very close to each other in Emilia-Romagna region, the red one in Italy, in the northern of Italy. And uh, uh, at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia, I am in the Department of Ingegneria into Ferrari because we have uh, just only one department for mechanical, civil, uh, uh, computer and electronic uh, engineering. And uh, within the department, uh, I'm uh, heading the image lab, uh, uh, research lab, uh, working in image processing, computer vision and pattern recognition. These are the four um, uh, topics uh, that we are covering, in particular security and surveillance. Maybe I'm working in this area since uh, 15 years. But now we have uh, also other projects that are started uh, in uh, multimedia for digital library and especially in Sersom network and embedded system. So before starting, just an advertisement, if uh, there is someone, especially of young people that would like to, to spend one year in Italy, at least, uh, please contact me and uh, I will be very happy to give uh, this opportunity. So uh, my agenda. Uh, I try to, to do a presentation not in general about people surveillance or people security because it's too much, but to concentrate on just only two problems, that is people detection and people re-identification. Why these two projects? Because maybe it's something that we are working a lot uh, in the last uh, four or five years, 
but especially because I like that in both of these projects uh, there is a dichotomy that is uh, always present between the need to, of using uh, 2D and 3D models, uh, and so also a priori knowledge about this, uh, and uh, instead the, the need or the opportunity to use a lot of machine learning. Especially, every, you know that in the last years, uh, uh, most of the, the uh, techniques that we are using in computer vision are very mixed with uh, um, uh, paradigms that come from machine learning. So uh, people analysis uh, recognition and people detection is very pervasive in many applications. Uh, surveillance, of course, uh, uh, real-time detection, uh, safety, and forensic. Surveillance and forensics are very similar for the topic, but very different for the constraints. Surveillance uh, near the real time, uh, while instead in forensics uh, you can have time, you can do uh, offline uh, uh, tasks. But at the same time, in surveillance, very often you have a constrained world. You can calibrate camera, uh, uh, have a hypothesis of fixed camera. Instead in forensics, uh, maybe you have images that you, come, you, you don't know where they come from. And uh, uh, as uh, not only security, but also in multimedia. For instance, uh, in sport analysis, you need a lot of people detection and people analysis. And uh, I put also the third pro problem, because in Europe, uh, the next uh, Horizon 2020 uh, uh, project will be concerning well-being a lot uh, for retail analysis, comfort in architecture, so detecting where the people are going, uh, the, what the people are, are doing uh, to create, uh, to to design new architecture, for building automation, for entertaining, uh, and for many other applications. This is just only uh, some example of what uh, we are doing. Uh, and uh, this, uh, uh, for instance, that one uh, is an example of people detection in supermarket. Uh, the other one are people detection and analysis in working uh, position. The other one is that that one uh, is something that we did uh, with the Italian policy for uh, analyzing the behavior of bad people, that one that uh, uh, have to be recognized for their uh, biometric, not biometric, soft biometric aspect, like for instance, uh, the, the type of dresses or something like this. And uh, okay, now I would like to start uh, discussing with you some uh, uh, fixed point. The first fixed point that you know that video surveillance started uh, uh, I think uh, 15 years ago, but after uh, 11 uh, September, uh, uh, you know, of uh, 11 years ago, uh, there was an increase of interest in all the parts of the Europe. Uh, I was very surprised uh, uh, discussing uh, about this uh, with IBM, uh, that uh, the, all the program in IBM about surveillance started the day after the, 90, uh, the 11 September. And now IBM is one of the best and the larger producer of system of uh, video surveillance in the world. And, uh, and I think that as well as this, uh, another um, starting point uh, instead was uh, a special issue uh, of transaction of pattern analysis and machine intelligence of 2000. That was the first special issue regarding uh, people uh, uh, surveillance. So especially for young one, start of this work, uh, uh, coming from a lot of uh, U.S. Uh, university, working about uh, detection, tracking, and so on, uh, about people analysis. And this is a typical uh, um, mainstream of the research of, uh, of the last 10 years. Uh, it's a typical uh, mm, top-down research, uh, acquisition, single, multiple camera, detection, moving object detection with background suppression and everything like this. And then tracking, linear prediction, uh, generative and uh, stochastic prediction, and then understanding very purposive. So we would like to understand if there are two people that are working together or something like this. I think instead that uh, in this new um, part in the, in the last uh, uh, years, uh, there are a, a shift, uh, a shift in the interest a and a shift in knowledge about uh, what we can do. And so uh, I try to put together uh, this name because uh, I think that there are many inferences and interference coming from other fields. For instance, uh, detection and tracking now are very related to each other with the spatial and temporal reasoning. And also learning and inferring uh, the, all the things that the other community in big data analysis are doing 
about clustering, about classification. Now we can use directly also in surveillance and uh, searching the recognizing also using the human feedback. Uh, it's not the time to say we have to do everything uh, automatically, but also the, especially in forensics, uh, the possibility to include the knowledge and the interest of human is very interesting and also in this part. So uh, with uh, this general umbrella, I would like just only to, to put uh, my, uh, my interest in the inner two or three points, detection and re-identification as an example of two, the most important uh, problem we have uh, in, uh, in people analysis. First, uh, people detection. Uh, we um, uh, also yesterday, you have some paper here about uh, this kind of problem. And the, uh, you know the problem, uh, extracting image and video something, uh, a specific shape uh, that can be classified uh, as people. Independently if it's a true people or it's just uh, an artificial uh, people, uh, but uh, the idea of a shape of people. This is false, nobody do uh, people detection now. Most of the research lab in the world are doing pedestrian detection. This is different to people detection because uh, 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 most of us assume that the people are uh, in, uh, uh, in vertical position uh, and maybe you are walking or are, are sitting in this one because uh, this is the model that is uh, easier to be uh, identified. And uh, also in uh, this area of pedestrian detection, there has been a shift during the last uh, years from a model-based vision to a learning-based vision. At the beginning, the first uh, work, not to this, this is, was uh, one of my work, uh, but it was more related to with the tracking, but the first uh, work about uh, people detection uh, uh, addressed the idea of we have a model of the people because there is a head that is uh, ellipsoidic, there is a cylinder or something like this, and looking around if, you f if we find something like this. And then you can use, m uh, for instance, articulate model, articulate model and graph matching, uh, uh, like uh, in this work uh, that we did uh, with Marcello Pelillo of University of Venezia, looking for uh, the possibility to recognize uh, the, uh, the shape of people, even the camera is moving, or just only inferring that there are some parts uh, that uh, can be part of a human and are connected to each other. And uh, this idea of uh, model detection is a idea is uh, uh, to, uh, to have the possibility to uh, to give a model not only of the people, but a model of the scene, a model of the motion, a model of the interaction. This is an ex uh, another example of something uh, we can do if we have a model of the people. We say people is something that is vertical, is, that is going around, and we can detect uh, the, the, the support points uh, uh, in a homographic view like that one, or uh, the head position with the people are lying. So this is a, an example of uh, detection and tracking uh, of uh, people with uh, multiple camera with uh, overlapped field of view. Uh, you know, in this case, uh, that is a typical uh, surveillance uh, environment and surveillance scenario, you have a lot uh, of, uh, uh, I don't say constraint, but uh, initial hypothesis. Uh, you, you know the camera, you know everything. But instead, uh, in the last uh, four or five years, uh, most uh, of the work uh, related with the people detection are based on learning. Based on learning, we say, okay, I, I don't care about the model of the people, but I know that uh, the people is easier to be recognized because uh, we are so used to see uh, it around. And so we can use uh, classifier and learning system to learn that. Uh, we know that uh, the problem so is moved, uh, not about the model, about uh, which kind of feature we can use, which kind of classifier we can use. So yeah, I just only uh, put here some name or something that is very well known, OG, Covariance, uh, Integral Channel with Dollar and Perona, uh, Model Bay Descriptor, and uh, Friends and Ball and the other ones that uh, uh, can be, can be um, detected. I think that it's not a tutorial and most of you know uh, uh, everything about uh, uh, histogram of, uh, gauge, uh, uh, of gradients. Uh, this is one of the most famous uh, uh, people detector, also maybe because it's in OpenCV, so everyone can use uh, directly uh, in, uh, uh, there is uh, the, the software in OpenCV that can be used. So uh, image, uh, the image is divided in the many windows uh, in a sliding window manner. Uh, in each window we can detect uh, 
some, uh, uh, some feature like uh, the histogram of gradient, then we put together all in a super vector machine to classify if uh, there is a people or not. Uh, other method is that the using cascade of classifier, very useful, uh, add a boost, a logic boost, or something like this. So you use uh, a lot of uh, weak classifier in a cascade uh, in, in, uh, in a such manner to have the first classifier that are able to eliminate a lot uh, of, uh, of uh, false example. And just only if you arrive at the end of, of the chain, uh, you say, okay, this is the people. And this is something that uh, is uh, very well known too because it's uh, uh, the covariant descriptor that has been proposed by Peter Mayer, uh, Porikli, and uh, Tuzel in the PhD uh, mm, work of Tuzel and uh, has been uh, presented in PAMI three years ago, I think. And uh, the problem is that it's in a Riemannian manifold and so it's a computational uh, uh, a little uh, problematic, but uh, you can use uh, to detect people. So using hog uh, covariance or many other, what uh, is the result? These are typical results uh, where you have a lot of correct detection, but you have a lot of false positive too. You have uh, some under, the, uh, under segmentation. Under segmentation in surveillance is a very big project problem because if you don't have the head, if you don't have the, the, the hand, maybe you can not do uh, action analysis or something like that. So this is a problem that uh, normally is, uh, uh, is not considered enough. And you have false negative uh, over segmentation and so on. So uh, just to finish this um, tutorial part, uh, I suggest you, if you are not uh, uh, so familiar with this problem, to, to read especially the new um, pedestrian detection evaluation of the state of the art, uh, this work of Petro Perona and the other one that uh, uh, has, been has been published on PAMI, I think, in January or in February of this year. And then there are many other um, uh, uh, surveys, uh, also that one about uh, um, specific uh, pedestrian detection. This is an example of how many type of different detector you can have with a different uh, feature with a different learning and uh, also with different results in, term in, uh, in, uh, in terms uh, of speed uh, and in terms uh, of accuracy. And, but uh, what is one common problem uh, to every uh, classifier, people detector classifier? The problem is about uh, the selection of the region of interest. Because sometimes what you can do is to do a pre-segmentation. Maybe in, se in surveillance you can say, okay, I take just only the things that are in motion. And so you can do a, a, a pre-segmentation by, uh, by motion. Or you can use uh, uh, depth uh, in order to, to have a pre-segmentation by depth. But in general, most of the, the large majority of uh, the system proposes a sliding window paradigm. That you know, the sliding window paradigm say, okay, I take every possible windows, uh, small or large, uh, in every, uh, in every possible uh, position uh, in order to, to have uh, uh, all the information I have. We have two problems. The first problem is computational time because in such manner you can have uh, many, many windows. And the second problem is that you can have a lot uh, of uh, uh, false positives. This is an example of one project uh, that uh, we, uh, we had in Modena uh, two, started two years ago, that in this real case, uh, you have a lot of things uh, that are similar to people. And so in this case, uh, using a sliding windows approach uh, or using other traditional approach, uh, uh, have some problem to, uh, to arrive at a good solution. And uh, this is an example, uh, I'm sorry if it's small, but I can uh, leave uh, the slide after, of how many windows you need to, to, to have a good classifier. The typical classifier, pedestrian classifier, but also by car, by face, and the other one, use uh, 100 of uh, 1,000 of uh, windows for each image uh, to detect uh, people or to detect too much, too much, uh, both for computational and for accuracy uh, reason. And for this reason, uh, there are many, uh, many new proposals, 
that try to, do, to use uh, either contextual information, typical contextual information, uh, if you have, uh, is uh, the uh, perspective or geometry information. If you have a calibration of camera, if you know what you are watching, you can decide the typical size of people. Or, but uh, uh, the other more general approach instead uh, is uh, uh, the possibility of exploring subspace uh, of windows. In this case, I, I put uh, the, the ascent of four of them. There are uh, some works uh, that using the branch and brown uh, optimization. Other one that use uh, deterministic multigrid or deterministic multi uh, uh, pyramidal uh, analysis. But uh, I would like to spend uh, some, uh, mm, uh, some slides uh, to present you something that we, uh, we proposed uh, uh, one uh, years ago, that is uh, the result of uh, a PhD program of Giovanni Gualdi, one of my students. And uh, I'm happy because it uh, has been uh, published on PAMI this month, uh, so it's very new. And uh, the, uh, the basic idea is uh, not looking around uh, uh, if it's not necessary, and uh, to propose uh, a multi-stage particle windows. That is very general because you can use for uh, people, but you can use for face, you can use for vehicle, or you can use uh, for object detection. And uh, uh, the, ba the basic idea is not looking around uh, in a uniform manner, but to try to estimate uh, the probability distribution of function that say where there is a, a more probability to find, uh, to find the people. Uh, why it could work? Uh, it works because uh, our model we are looking for, like uh, people, is symmetric. And uh, not only symmetric, but there is a large region of support of positive detection. That means that maybe if this is uh, the correct detection, also all of them are not so bad. So if are not so bad, you can look around. And this is actually true because we, we did a lot of, of uh, experiment, for instance, using uh, the famous Viola Jones for face, uh, using the, the classifier of uh, Pietro Perona, the hog, uh, the, using the covariance of Borikli and the other one. And what you can see there, maybe I have a larger one, uh, is that uh, in this example, we, uh, we selected 100 of uh, images uh, in uh, the Pascal uh, data set. We align in order to have the people in, in the middle and looking uh, uh, what happens if you don't take uh, exactly the middle, but you take uh, the detection around. So if you start with a, uh, with a position like this of the windows, maybe you will have an, uh, an answer that can give you a suggestion to go around and to, to find the exact position. And this is because the, mm, the new things, uh, very, very simple, is that you can have the detection response of your classifier. If you're using feedback, the detection response of your classifier, you can create uh, the uh, PDF uh, that say where you can looking for. Um, two different possibilities uh, without using a lot of formula. One is very simple. In a cascade uh, classifier, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, see when your classified uh, is stopped. If you have 30, mm, 40, for instance, uh, uh, we classified in cascade, and your cascade classifier stopped 10, okay, uh, your response is 10 over 40. Very, very simple. In a super vector machine, you need a, a, a little uh, more complicated uh, uh, answer, but it's just only an, a number that is uh, between zero and one. And this is something uh, with some images that we are proposing. We start, we estimate the object detection as a PDF. So first of all, we do a uniform quantization. Uniform quantization that means not in a grid, but in, in a uniform uh, uh, probability of distribution. And in the first step, uh, we put some particle. For this reason, we call particle windows because it's uh, very similar to the idea of particle filtering that uh, we use in tracking. We, uh, we, we, we put some particle, but uh, uh, an order of magnitude less than the typical uh, sliding window. And then uh, we use assign a Gaussian kernel to, uh, to each sample. We compute a classifier. We, we see the answer. We create uh, the, the PDF. We estimate a PDF, uh, and after this, we propose a new distribution. 
So in the second layer, you have the black distribution. In the third layer, the, the pink one, the green one, the blue one, and so at the end. And so at the end, you are able to find, uh, after just only three, four, five uh, uh, steps, uh, you can have uh, a good uh, mm, uh, search uh, for this uh, uh, position. These are some results that you can find in the paper, but maybe also I can discuss with you. This is an example with uh, the Adam family for face uh, with Viola Jones. And these are some uh, other examples with uh, many different um, databases. Uh, I think that uh, one of the, mm, the best things uh, is that you can use less, uh, 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 less uh, number of, uh, of windows, but also that is very precise because you find exactly the size and the position so uh, in for surveillance and for other parts uh, that is interesting. Uh, of course th you can use uh, also for starting the tracking so for uh, in a video because the result of one image uh, you can use for uh, another one uh, like in uh, this video and uh, uh, look for instance uh, that one is not pedestrian because it's in a position that is not typical of a pedestrian. And for this reason, in some uh, frame uh, you can detect it, in other frame you cannot detect. But th this is uh, just enough depending on your application. In our case, uh, our application was, uh, uh, okay, that one to detect uh, if the people have the helmet or not the helmet. And so it was enough to, to, to see the, the position of the people just only uh, every few frames or something uh, like this. And this is something that we finished in collaboration with uh, our region. Of course, you can apply this also in other field. This is a thing that uh, I'm sure you know better than mine. And uh, this is a possibility to have, uh, to, to, to track uh, people uh, in uh, the, mm, uh, in a soccer uh, uh, situation. Uh, this is an example of uh, a product uh, that uh, uh, Vision uh, is, it is a spin-off of my university, is created and now is uh, uh, selling in collaboration with some Italian teams uh, to, to, to analyze uh, uh, the possibility of players to, to play better. I, I don't want to spend more time about this, but uh, if, uh, if you understand well, uh, this is something that you can do. Of course, uh, after pedestrian detection, you can do a lot of other things. Uh, just uh, one slide to, to show you a new things that we are doing because it's uh, necessary for re-identification. That is uh, the possibility to look at, to classify the orientation of people. Maybe as in the presentation of uh, 10 minutes ago about the gender analysis, uh, you can define the gender with the frontal face, uh, or you can detect the cars uh, in different position. But then the problem is that you would like also to understand which is the orientation of people uh, using with uh, tracking maybe or without. Uh, normally typical uh, approaches until now work in just only the four main uh, direction. Instead also the other direction are interesting. Here, um, one, uh, another mm, PhD student, Davide Baltieri, working uh, in my lab, uh, is uh, mm, presenting this one in the next uh, ECCV uh, in Italy in October. That is uh, uh, European Conference Computer Vision. This is about the possibility to have uh, um, orientation of this. And the results uh, in this case uh, are, are, not, uh, are not bad, especially because normally for this project, the results are normally very bad. So look at, for instance, this is an example of something uh, we, we um, obtain for different data set. There are many different data set. And what you can say, maybe you can see better in that one, is that uh, uh, in the upper part of the body, there is the ground true. In the, in the second part of the body, there is the result. So if uh, the color is different, uh, you see that there is a mistake just uh, to understand. And uh, what you can see uh, is that uh, the east, uh, north, west, and south, uh, south is not so good, but uh, west, north, and east are very good. Uh, uh, instead, the, the other one are not enough. But using this together with tracking uh, um, allows to improve uh, the situation. Okay, now uh, how much time I have? One quarter, uh, uh, 50 minutes, so 20 minutes, very good. Uh, so uh, for people detection, 
we have to say a lot of things, uh, which is the best uh, classifier, uh, but uh, I think that now uh, so many groups in the world are working in this area that the results are very interesting now and very stable. But the problem instead is uh, what you can do after people detection. You can do tracking, we, we can do biometric identification. If you have enough number of pixels, if you have enough, uh, uh, enough information, but uh, I like a lot uh, the problem of re-identification. Re the problem of uh, re-identification is very simple, uh, called, uh, very often uh, uh, is called also reacquisition. Give the same label, the same tag to the same people. I don't know maybe who is this people, but it's just only to understand uh, if uh, the people uh, 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 has been seen before. Like for instance, uh, uh, re-identification as a recognition to answer, have you seen this person before? Uh, typical of surveillance or so of forensics. But you can use re-identification, uh, this is an example, just only to say, I have a database uh, of uh, pre-identified, uh, uh, watching list of pre-identified people by just only the aspect, uh, the type of dress you have in this moment uh, and a few other cues, and to say, okay, this people is one of the one that uh, it was in uh, this room before or not, and, uh, and also you can use for different camera. The second problem is that uh, you can use re-identification as semi-supervised tracking. This is very interesting, uh, because uh, tracking is uh, still an open problem. There are uh, so many applications of tracking, but tracking is very difficult. Uh, uh, problem and sometimes you have uh, some situation like this in a complicated situation with crowd uh, situation like this uh, and maybe you have uh, the possibility to see the people just only every five frames because of occlusion because you don't have the video or so on and so on you can use 